Next, we visit Mike Rodia at his home in South Salem. Mike is a hobbyist beekeeper and secretary for the Willamette Valley Beekeepers Association. In the plant world, in order for uh, one plant to pollinate another, unless it's called self-fertile, that means it pollinates itself, the pollen has to get from one plant to the other. And there's a lot of insects that do that. Bumblebees do that, some flies do that, but honeybees do it actually very effectively because there's so many of them that you can put into an area at one time. From the point of view of humans, we use that uh, process to, to actually get the crops that we want. We put them in apple orchards and peach orchards and cherry orchards and almond orchards and we put them in fields of broccoli and cauliflower and we put them in fields of uh, oak carrots, for instance. So uh, bees pollinate about one third of all the, the food that we eat. That is, we would not get that food without the bees. That's my Recently a new malady has occurred and that's called collapsed colony disease. And that appears to be a combination of a whole lot of things at one time. We keep bees in very tight colonies. We maximize the amount of bees in that little box whenever we can. We, we transport them thousands of miles in some cases, put them in an area where they have a single crop. They have nothing else except to say almonds. And then we haul them back say to Oregon and put them in another single crop. So they don't get a, a variety of diet. So there's, they're under a lot of stresses at one time. And so it's believed that collapse, collapse calling disease is a combination of all of these things at one time hitting the bees. And the bees basically, in sort of a simplification, just give up and leave because they can't cope with all these stresses anymore in the hive and they just disappear. And so you go, a hive will be full of bees and a week later, two weeks, they're completely gone and nobody knows where they go. They're gone. In fact, that's been a, very, a big question. If you have 20,000 bees leave the beehive and they go, where do they go? We don't know. So yeah. we, we really do not know what's causing this. I mean, I lose hives. Everybody loses hives. I lost two thirds of my hives last year, but it wasn't collapsed colony disease because I can tell by what happens uh, with the hive, that the hive starts decreasing slowly, the queen dies, and so the hive will fail over a period of time. Yeah. That's different than collapsed colony disease, yeah. where all of a sudden they're gone. Okay. Uh, it used to be if you lost, uh, let's say, 5%, 10%, it was normal, but I just read the literature, they're saying 30% now is what's happening on an average, which is an awful lot compared to what it was 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. We have inbred our bees, so there's only like about eight lines of separate genetics of queens. And so we've selected bees in part for certain characteristics like making honey or gentleness or whatever, and not necessarily for survival. So you don't have the genetics there anymore that might be able to uh, develop a resistance to whatever's causing these problems. Okay. Now before you get too worried, keep in mind that there are things we can do to help. First, avoid using pesticides, as they are harmful to the bees. Next, stay informed. Read articles online and talk to the local beekeepers at the market. And finally, Mike recommends putting flowers in your yard that will attract bees. The flowers will provide the bees with a good nectar source, and as a bonus, the bees will pollinate the rest of the plants in your garden. Let's go taste some honey. Mike pours samples of three distinct varieties. First up is Mike's wildflower honey. It tastes of honey at its best, pure and simple. Next we try the meadow foam honey, which had an undeniable overtone of vanilla. That's exactly right, you got it, it is vanilla. That is, and, and, and you know, Interesting enough, the vanilla bean is a tropical plant, yet that metal foam has the taste of vanilla, and that's why I can taste it. Then, Queen Anne's Lace. This honey was dark, yeah. rich, and toasty. Almost like a really good molasses. <laughs> Quite a difference, isn't there? Mike is even kind enough to send us home with our very own bottle. This experience reminded me that I really like honey. In fact, I want honey and all the other wonderful foods that come along with it 
to be abundantly available in the future. So, if in fact bees are in danger, what can we do to help? We leave Mike's home with not only a better understanding of the honeybee situation, but also a clear sense that we must take care of these tiny creatures, for their sake and for ours. <laughs>